my idea here is to share something with you um, about programming. So I've been programming, I've been through the journey that I guess John and Kendall have been through, although Kendall's is longer and went through MIT. So mine didn't go through that. I saw that on your resume. <laughs> you didn't point it out, but <laughs> mine didn't go there. <laughs> but uh, I started with programming, gosh, when I was very young, and there was a excitement, there's a aliveness, there's a there's some kind of there's something about making computers do cool stuff that that I've been able to hold on to for more than 20 years. So I, you know, as, as some of you may not be just starting your journey, some of you may be just starting your journeys, but you're always starting the rest of your journey, and. Um, it's not always exciting, it, especially when, like, because I got into reporting, I got into, well, my, I get paid full time right now. My job is called software integration. So I make programs work together behind the scenes. You can't even see my code. Other people's code is on the React front end or on the mobile app. My code's behind it, like making them work together. I still love it, but if there's something, you know, there's some, uh, it could seem like you get into an area where we're making software is, is drudgery. It's a J-O-B. Um, and this, interest of mine, which I don't have it on this title, artificial intelligence, um, has sort of kept me excited or interested or looking at new things. Um, it's kept my personal projects in the area of fun um, all for, since, since uh, well, 1994. So I'll tell you how old I am, I guess. So that's how long <laughs> I've been interested in this. Now, this talk isn't about a, in artificial intelligence. I'm doing a talk about machine learning because artificial intelligence is too big. In fact, machine learning is too big for a 15 minute talk or a 10 minute talk. But um, in art, the, the trouble with artificial intelligence and the trouble with machine learning is that we don't, as humans, we're still kind of bad at understanding what intelligence is. So it's kind of hard to make our artificial version of it. But we're pretty good at breaking the problem down into smaller problems. So learning is one of the things humans do. And it's been a few decades or about four decades, humans have been trying to figure out how to make computers think like we think. So we took like vision, for example, computer vision is one kind of art of an artificial intelligence area. Um, this talk won't be about computer vision. Um, there's, there's natural language processing. So your Google home and your Amazon Alexa can understand what you're saying. Somebody had to figure that out, right? So these are little jobs that brains do. And as humans, we've, we've gone out and tried to find out more of them. So one of those areas that's got me very, I do all my fun projects in is machine learning. Um, and some of it was at work. I actually did get paid for some of it. And I'll cover that in this talk a little bit. Um, but a lot of it is not paid, even though I'm a full time software developer, like Kendall said, having somebody pay you to sit in front of a computer all day writing code is a great way to get better at code, <laughs> instead of having to squeeze it in between kids and snow shoveling and, you know, <laughs> and I got a new puppy. I mean, there's a lot of things that can take away from your free time. Um, so I did have a job where some of what we're going to cover this talk was actually paid work. Um, and so what I want to share with you a little bit is how to tell, how to tell when machine learning might be an appropriate thing to do, what it is, what, what, what kind of programs it are. It's really just a kind of computer program. It's a, a computer program that does a job. It's a computer program that learns while it's running. Think of it like that. So a lot of times you and I make a program, our, what we're trying to do is make the computer do something. Okay. But if the something that we want the computer to do is to get better at, at, at a job. So for example, to get, to, if your Google Home gets better at recognizing your voice, or um, if, the, uh, if the bad system at your work gets better at, at facial recognition or something, there's all, all these little jobs computers can get better at without me programming them or without you changing the code. So how can that do that? There's only, it's not magic. The, the way the programs learn is they use memory, just like humans do. So machine learning is a, kind of computer program you can make where you use data with memory is on a computer memory is data that you write down in some kind of ram or disk right that's all but values of variables now you're going to see there's a lot of them you want if you're going to learn from experience if you're going to learn from your memory you need to have a lot of memory um in order to to get these programs to work but we're getting better at it they're getting more and more efficient nowhere near a two-year-old kid so you know like Google's and Facebook's ads that are telling you what you want to buy before you ever knew it, they're still not as good at it as a two-year-old kid. But we're getting better, and it's kind of fun to, to learn how these things work. So we're looking at algorithms. Oh, so an algorithm is just a name for a, a, a kind of program. 
So maybe you're writing Python and I'm writing Go and someone else is writing JavaScript. We can all write the same algorithm in our different languages. So it's a, it's a way of, it's a job a program can do. And there's certain algorithms that work with memory that they write, either they record it while they're running or we give it to it ahead of time. So you can make either one, right? You can make a program that keeps track of what happens and, and puts that in memory and learns from that. Or you can make a program where you give it a whole bunch of memory that you learned outside, like we do with, with uh, that's, that's how we recognize letters and stuff, OCR. Um, you give it a whole bunch of examples of the letter A and say, that's a letter A, <laughs> right? So there's more than one kind of memory you can give these algorithms. So the idea is there's is, is different is learning how to make algorithms that that get better at doing their job by using data rather than by us giving them instructions, right? Um, so there's a few different kinds of learning algorithms I wanted to show you, and it won't all be slides because otherwise it would be kind of boring. They're all kind of fun. There are different kinds of fun. So supervised learning is what facial recognition and OCR are. It's it's where you already the humans already know all the right answers, right? And we're just trying to get the computer to get the right answers. Then there's unsupervised learning where we don't know the right answers and we want the computer to tell us. <laughs> and then there's reinforcement learning where it's not even about answers, it's about action. And I'll, I'll go through each one of those. So we're gonna cover, I'm gonna briefly sort of introduce you to these different categories of machine learning algorithms because maybe one of those is really interesting to you. Well, one of them is really interesting to me and I'll tell you that one at the end. But <laughs> um, I, I, I like all of them, one of them takes my time the most. Um, but maybe your interest is gonna go in a certain direction. Um, so to give away some of the uh, some of the, the the secret, the one I got paid for is not my favorite. The one I got paid to do is called unsupervised learning, and I'll I'll give that story when we get to it. So um, now, like Kendall, um, I think I heard in your story something really that 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 clicked with me. When I first tried to learn AI, there was a um, there was some advanced courses, <laughs> and those advanced courses terrified me. And I probably took ten more years before I finally learned neural networks because the first time I learned it, I got overwhelmed with linear algebra and matrix math and differential calculus, which I hadn't learned yet. And I thought I was a pretty smart cookie with math, but apparently I wasn't ready yet. So don't worry, <laughs> you know, just like all computer programming, you know, you can do 3D programming without knowing linear algebra and you can do neural networks without knowing linear, al linear algebra, but it does help. I bring up neural networks because it's a tool that these different kinds of machine learning algorithms use. So you can think of it like in, in Python, there's a library called PyTorch and it does neural networks. Um, I'm gonna show you a JavaScript one in a minute called uh, Reinforce.js that uses it for one of, their, one of their algorithms. So this is just like a little tool you can use in a bigger algorithm to make a part of a program um, change itself little by little every time you run it. So the program's got these numbers in there and those numbers tell it, you know, how about, you know, how likely is it that I should choose this instead of that? And after the next time you run it, maybe it changes its preferences a little bit. That's all, so that's the network part. We learned it from brains. We looked at how brains worked and we tried to make computers do that. So that's what, when you hear the word neural network, it's an algorithm. It's an algorithm using a bunch of numbers and changing those numbers little by little over time so that the program does something different. That's all it is. So that, I wanna take the mystery out of it. Um, and either you're gonna get, you're somebody who's really into math and you wanna go make your own neural network, you can do that. Or maybe you're somebody who wants to just make a learning program, which I am. So then you're just gonna go use a neural network that you can, you can use a library and that's fine too. Um, there's one called brain.js too, I think. Um, that's not the one I'm using. So just wanna take the mystery out of neural networks. So let me go through the, a little more on how these, these different methods work. Supervised learning is the oldest one and it's probably the one you hear the most about. So you give a, so um, in fact, the Twitter algorithm that recognizes faces and it's racist that it was a supervised learning algorithm and it got racist because we gave it a whole bunch of pictures of white people and not so many pictures of black people and it thinks white people are more likely to be a real face than black people. So that, that's what the AI ethics research going on now is trying to unpack is, you know, if you're gonna make a program learn from data, you better make the data good. Um, supervised learning is the kind of program that copies. It, it looks at what we do and tries to mimic us. It tries to, to, to memorize the way we categorize things and do it like us. Um, the, the programs that can't tell dogs apart from blueberry muffins, those are, <laughs> those are supervised learning programs. Um, the, this uses neural networks and the, you, these, this is the one that's the most available. You, TensorFlow does this. Um, it's not the only thing it does. But, so you can find libraries to do supervised learning all over the place. So if you're interested in making something, for example, I was thinking of an example for Free Code Camp one day. 
I could make a program that looks at pictures of all of you and detects uh, people doing a dab. Like that, that's the kind of job you could do with supervised learning, right? Because I look, I get a thousand pictures and all the ones that have a dab in them, I'm going to mark dab and all the ones that don't have a dab in them, I'm going to say not dab. And then I'll see if the computer can remember how to tell them apart. And surprisingly, it does. I mean, you wouldn't want to write that algorithm to take the pixels apart and fix it, right? So that's what supervised learning is good for, if you want to investigate that. And I'm not going to teach it to you. I'm, and a, a lightning talk, my idea is to get your interest, get you interested. Then you go take a Udemy course or something on the part that you like. Um, so I'll tell you, the one I got paid for is un unsupervised learning. This was a, a company who was, I was working on reporting and then what they call business intelligence, where you do a lot of reports and dashboards and graphs and stuff. And I took a statistics course. And you, this is where you, you look at data and you try to figure, you make the computer try to figure out patterns in the data. So for us, it was like, um, do, do chicken fingers sell better in winter or summer? So we were looking at all the data of all the sales for the, and, and, and we don't know, we're just going to ask it questions, right? And tell us where chicken fingers, um, the, the exact problem we did was tell us where chicken fingers sell the best. We don't even know, right? Um, but it would, it would group the sales for us. So it, it knows how to look at, like, like if you look at um, uh, uh, a whole audience, you know, unsupervised learning is like this. If you look at an audience at a sports game, and they do the wave, you can kind of see the wave, you can follow the pattern. That's statistical, there's some statistics to that. And unsupervised learning is a kind of machine learning algorithm that knows how to look at a bunch of data and find what's different. Um, and it's really, in, it's really useful. So it's very stats oriented. Um, if you're into math, you'd like it, but you can do it with R, for example. Um, and this is the one that people pay for. So if you want to get a job, like an entry level ML job would probably be like this because that's a place where humans are bad at something and computers are really good at it go find patterns in data bank fraud would be, it would be like this too so the one I, that i've been my darling recently has been reinforcement learning and i'm not getting paid for this but it's a lot of fun um so what this is is instead of trying to recognize things like like what a dab is or patterns in data what you're trying to do is have a bro program actually do things and then but based on the results or the outcome of doing something it's going to modify what it does. And for that, I wanted to show you guys an example in JavaScript. So I have it ready to go down here. Uh, let's see. This is called reinforced JS. These are a few reinforcement learning algorithms, right? So I have one called grid world. So the idea is that there's a, there's a cell in here that that's where the treasure is kind of. And there's another cell in here where there's a lot of, there's a poisonous snake or something. You can think of it like that. And, you can look at, there's a method of reinforcement learning called dynamic programming, where it's going to go, keep going through the, each time you run it, it gets better and better at trying to find the, so I can turn it on so it just keeps running, trying to find the best way to get from the top left to the treasure without getting bitten by snakes. That's reinforcement learning. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh boy, dab project. I'm going to do the dab project. <laughs> I just saw that in the chat. So, so this is one of the many reinforcement learning algorithms. And there's a little better one. It's the same world, but this is called TD learning. And it has, a, it has a, little, a little player in it. So in this case, you could like turn it on and the player starts to explore. It starts to, this is your program, right? Your program goes and explores its environment and tries to find the best way to get to the treasure. And it hasn't found the treasure yet. So I'm going to speed it up so you can kind of see what happens. Oh, now it found the treasure. And now it tries to get, it start, every time it finds it, it starts over and, runs again and runs again and runs again. And each time it updates its memory of the world to know what the best way through the, through the path is. So this is called reinforcement learning. And these are the programs I've been playing with a lot recently. Um, oh, shoot, is my screen going slow? I see a note in the Slack. I'm gonna stop it um, and I'll leave it up for a minute. So, all right, I heard that my, my video was delayed. So I will put a link to this in our Slack so that you all can try it out, these different algorithms. And if you guys could share that to the Twitch stream, then people could try them themselves. <laughs> so anyway, this is, uh, that's, that's reinforcement learning. It's the one I've been playing with a lot recently. Um, so that's the lightning talk, so I can't go much further. I wanted to give you some resources. If you want to find me and a couple of other Techlahoma people who are into this, there are two channels in the Slack um, on Techlahoma. The AI Book Club is more for studying. The AI Battleground is more for my secret project. Um, that's where that is. And then there's also an online re uh, machine learning course at fast.ai that's completely free. So I thought I'd give you those resources as well. So thanks for your attention. I hope I packed a lot into a short amount of time.